my dearest Avonlea. This is the beginning of an adventure. Everything here is new. The city smells different. There are all these courts everywhere running across the sky and it's never entirely quiet. Even when you don't see the traffic, you can hear it. I'm not gonna lie, my first night here I was pretty homesick. Matthew and Marilla have been so nice to me these past weeks. Not that they ever are not nice to me, but they've been even more incredible than usual. They've gotten me so much new stuff, new clothes and fancy stationery just to make sure that these three weeks will be as easy for me as possible. Neither Marilla or Matthew voiced their feelings very often, but the way they looked at me on the, that train station when they came to see me off made me feel more loved than I've ever felt in my life. And that only made me miss them more. I know it's only three weeks, but that night I felt like a hundred years away, and I do confess I cried a little. But I did get some visitors. Jane and Ruby came to see me, and Josie, bless her soul, came to bum some cake and to be a bitch, which, weirdly enough, felt downright homey. We went to a party someone threw to kick the three weeks off, and I cheered up quite a bit. This is an adventure. Today, we are going to show you around comedy. We, meaning me, Ruby and Jane. We did invite Josie due to a moment of poor judgement, but since she's apparently not talking to Jane for whatever reason right now, she passed. She said she had a hot date with some guy called Frank Stockley. A bit of gossip for you, dear Avonlea. I know you love your gossip. Yeah. So this is the lit building. It is. This is a story? There is a story, and um, according to some people, I'm not going to say who, I just know. Um, <laughs> Me. And, um, <laughs> yes, you. Uh, it's haunted. Where is a ghost in the lit building? I don't know. It's wow. really exciting. And, I don't know, it's meant to be like um, the janitor from like some time past. And like if you see him, you won't recognize him to be a ghost. He just kind of pops up in places. And apparently at night, um, he uh, has a habit of like turning on taps and stuff. Uh, or like leaving coffee machines on, or um, he has like no other life. yeah, like putting the lights on and stuff. So when people come in the morning, like there are, there's like water overflowing from sinks and stuff, and there are lights on that shouldn't be. Okay, yeah. yeah. Do you know what happened? Then? What? I don't really know. There's a lot of versions, probably, but um, I think it's got something to do with an elevator shaft. Elevator shaft. Maybe it was a tragic love story. I mean. You know, um, maybe he was in love with someone, like desperately, completely, utterly in love with someone, and then he, he couldn't have them, so he threw himself down the elevator shaft. Oh no! How romantic is You're that? You're so like in love with the It would be romantic and tragic if, if you know, uh, there was a class thing going on, like Absolutely. he couldn't like, marry yeah. the love of his life, yeah, because, because like financial they were a, they were a principle. And he was just a lonely janitor. janitor. That's oh no. That would be okay. But give so me something. Let's give say something. that he is a tragic love story ending in suicide isn't something for you. Yeah. Can we just? Can we just? Can you just promise me that he is one half beast? Oh, well, <laughs> you never. You know what we should do? We should go into the lit building at night. This is the best idea I've ever had. Oh my god, totally. Oh, and no, I wait, can wait, use the wait. Honey, I'm honey, you're 17. I know. You have time to marry rich. Oh, believe me, I don't even care about that. But and if you put your I mind do. to it, but I, I would like to have a place like that. If you put your mind to it and you make a collection to it, you can do that too. I believe in you, Ruby. Thanks. I believe in you. Ah, believe in me too, please. <laughs> I need it. I believe sure. I can sure, you can do it too. Okay, I this reckon. is the part when the musical comes in. <laughs> Musical. Mm -hmm. Which the one? The sun will come out. I never knew the cities could be this, you know, green and pretty. What did you think they were? <laughs> I don't know. You know, she thought they were like concrete jungle. Well, oh yeah. I've lived it? in a city before, unlike you, concrete <laughs> girl. <laughs> so this is my favorite building and also my least favorite building because this is the mathematics building, which means this is where they do the geometry, which is still painful and still hurts my soul, but look at it. 
It's like secret garden. I mean, look at the trees. Listen to the birds. Just quiet down for a moment and listen um, to the birds. I mean, every morning, I'm excited to go to math class, which is so weird for me, because it means that I get to go there. I mean, I sit right there. Sorry. I sit right there at that window, and I look outside, and I'm loving geometry class. It makes me confused. I don't know what to feel. Everything I've known of myself before this moment is being compromised. I just have to fly away. Wait, wait Anne. Anne, wait. Um, I don't really know what I'm doing in this video. I don't, I don't, I don't really care about that. It's a big comfort to have my girls here with me. Of course, not counting one. Though, when we were divided to classes, the only familiar face in mind was my good old pal Gilbert Blythe. But it's good to have him there, always reminding me not to let my game drop, because if I do, he is going to be there snatching the gold medal from right in front of my eyes, and I'm not going to let that happen. I'm also excited for the possibility of new kindred spirits. I'm probably going to sound like a straight up stalker right now, but I've already noticed a couple of girls that stench of friendship material. I don't know if I believe in love at first sight. I mean, I want to, but I'm not sure I do. What I do believe in, however, is friendship at first sight. Sometimes you just know right away when you've seen someone's face that you two are going to be friends. And I want to know these people, know them well, well enough to walk around our arms linked and call them nicknames. But just now I don't know them and they don't know me and probably don't want to know me particularly. Good thing I have these two for company. So, one guest who has been named the prettiest girl on campus in the world. Ruby! I propose a toast to Ruby Gillis and her beauty. May she marry rich and never have to work a day in her life. Hear, hear. <laughs> Don't you fret though, I heard Frank offering us someone that you are quite cute to and <laughs> Quite cute, wow, that's going to my CV. <laughs> By the way, you've got to tell me, are you actually going to see Gilbert Black? Oh my god, no. We've just been hanging out because we are really good friends, you know. I mean, I mean, he's, he's really nice and all. And since it was pretty clear Anne had no need for him anymore, I figured I'd go for it. I have no idea what he's saying half the time, though. He actually sounds just like Anne. Should go for it. <laughs> I actually find Frank more fun to hang out with, but you know, Gil is just so hard. <laughs> Wait. I thought Frank was into Josie. Oh, she wishes. But we must be boring you, Anne. After all, you don't like guys. I never said that I don't like guys. I said that I like girls and not girls, a girl. So, what are you? Bi? I, I don't know. Does that really matter to you? I just want to like who I like and not discuss it with you. Don't worry though, you can still go for it, the girl as you put it, I mean, I do not, nor did I ever have any need for Gilbert Black. Say the word and I'll switch to Frank in a heartbeat. Oh my god! Despite all this fun I'm having, my main focus is on the studying. Unlike my friends, I never had parents that started to save money for my college since the moment I was born, so not getting a scholarship might mean not getting to go. I haven't really talked about it with Marilla and Matthew, but I doubt they could afford my entire tuition. So I'm going to work my hardest, see where that gets me. I am on an adventure, my dearest Avonlea, but I do miss you from time to time. I'll write to you again next week.